the great man has arrived uh, in the studio. David, very good to see you. We'll let you settle down. Just Thanks, mate. shake hands with you. I, very I, I good. I had to look around when you said great. Very man. good to see you. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice I'm sorry. Well, nice to meet you. David, there is so much, obviously, to talk about. And, um, you know, the, the interesting thing is, even you, you and I, so, sorry, you're in the wrong chair, aren't you? We've got, we've got to put you the wrong over there chair. because, yeah, because we're going to get you over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. David and I now. used to work at the BBC together uh, in the, the, the late 80s. And the, um, the unfortunate thing for him and the really good thing for me was, of course, you fell out with the BBC. No, they fell out with me. And I got your sports shifts. I got a your snooker shifts. Apparently saying um, uh, the economic system is uh, destroying the uh, environment was um, incompatible with Ian Rush scored at trick. Mm. 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 And that was that. Yeah, I'm and glad, I, though. Glad it happened. Well, how amazing. If it hadn't have happened, you could have been sitting here and I, I'd have been unemployed. Something yeah, and I, I, I would have long taken the pill if I had continued <laughs> in that industry. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting you say about that industry because, you know, that's just one of the many things I want to talk to you about. That industry, that is the media, that is broadcast and there are limitations to that. And you know what? The older I am and the longer I'm in this business, you've got regulatory bodies which say what you can't say and what you should do. Don't and start how, me. How we control. I do want to start you. I do want to start you. Because I think whether you agree with this man or not, and I think, I think you just have got to listen to what he says. You listen to what he says and then come away and judge, judge for yourself exactly. after that. Right. So, media. What's broadcast? What's allowed to be broadcast? Well, um, I've been writing in my books now for nearly 30 years that there is a plan to make Orwell's 1984 reality. Um, and we're seeing this, of course, with more and more con uh, uh, control of uh, people's privacy and, and the constant um, gathering of fine detailed data of people's lives. But the key thing is this. What directs people's lives? What directs their opinions? What directs their behavior? Their perceptions. Their perceptions of themselves, their perceptions of the world, their perceptions of world events. The way they're sold those events. Yeah. Are, now, this is the point. Where do we get those perceptions from? We get them from information received. It might be a personal experience information, or it might be the 10 o'clock news, or it might be the Daily Mail, or something on Facebook. The point is, if you um, control the information that people receive, yeah. then you will, to a vast extent, dictate their perceptions, especially if you also censor, suppress, and marginalize other people giving another fix, another version of the same event or the first situ uh, same situation. Now, I've just come back um, literally a few days ago from America. I'm, I'm, I've been filming there and particularly f Silicon Valley. I call it the devil's playground. If you now look at that, what is when you visit it a very small area of America, never mind the world, you've got companies that are Facebook, uh, Google, etc., that are increasingly a dominating um, the gathering of data of people's lives. B, because of the way they have so impacted upon the uh, channels of communication, mm -hmm. they dictate to a, such a, an increasing extent what people see and what people don't see. Let me interrupt you there. I need to say something to you. Last night, um, I'm, I, I was on the phone at 11 o'clock at night to my brother, my elder brother, Leonard, right? And he attended your arena uh, conference in Dublin uh, recently. I'm going back there on yeah. the 24th. Tw you, you're 12 hours. He stands up there 10, 12 hours, and he does, he does whatever he does. Um, and we finished the conversation about you, and I said good night. And then suddenly there was a notification of two David Icke YouTube videos. And I said, I thought... Gosh, I didn't think my brother was very tech savvy. That was amazing. So I phoned him this morning. I said, thanks for those two video clips. They're very good. He said, I didn't send you two video clips. They weren't on my email. They weren't on my uh, text messages. They weren't on WhatsApp. But these were, they, they dropped down on my phone. Two YouTube suggestions about David Icke. Why did that happen? It's very simple. Um, I, I've um, come across many, many stories like this. In fact, to such an extent that um, 
Facebook has had to uh, say, actually, we're not doing it on purpose or it's just for advertising. They are actually listening to conversations. Um, obviously, you've not got a, a human being sitting there, um, although if they're targeting someone, it's a human being. But it, the general population, it's, it's algorithms. We're talking AI now. I mean, the possibilities of human um, manipulation of communication and the gathering of data now are, are limitless increasingly. And what happens is when, because many people have had conversations about, say, a product. An aftershave, uh, a concert yeah. ticket. Uh, and then it comes up on Facebook and they weren't even, um, you know, thinking that they were talking to Facebook. Can These I, are private conversations. Can I just ask you, what's wrong with that? So for some people her listening hus in, Her husband's in this business. Well, well, for some people, it's about convenience. It's about um, saving time. It's, oh, that's exactly what I was looking for. I'll click oh, onto right. it. So for some so people... So that's more important than uh, well, having private conversations well, for, in your own home. Then. Well, for me, if, if, if I'm talking about a holiday and a holiday Who comes up... Who else is listening to that conversation? And what, what else you say apart, uh, that, that is not a product? But, you know, I don't live my life looking at what ifs. No, you don't. No, you don't. And that's why that's why you're a doddle to scam. And you're a doddle to... But I've to... never been scammed. How do you know that? How do you know well, that? Because I haven't... I, well, so, what's, so, what's so a if scam? A pro if a product comes up and you buy it, you haven't been scammed. Well, I made the choice to buy it. You think you have. Well, there's, it's been there's put in front of, of you. If it wasn't put in front of you, you might up. not have bought it. There's lots of products that come up that I decide not to buy, and there are some that mm. I decide to buy. But, but no, say, Sarah, for instance, I'm planning a secret holiday with my secret girlfriend, and the message comes through going to Hawaii, and my wife sees Well, that. has that ever happened to you? But it could. You, well, well, how many people has it happened to? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Don't judge call, the world call, by your own experience well, and your own in. opinions. Well, call in. If that's happened to you, yeah. call in. I'd like to find out. And the point, the point, the point being that. The control out of Silicon Valley of the information we receive, um, the data that's collected, and increasingly the nature of the AI that uh, that's running things, concentrates that power in such a small area and such a, such a small number of hands. Um, and if you um, want to have um, control by the few of the vast number, you have to centralise power, and that's what is happening in Silicon Valley on a scale that beggars belief. Could that happen on a scale to affect elections, whether those be the US presidential elections or the referendum, the European referendum? Well, it, 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 anything's possible when you have algorithms that can filter out um, information that's not good for the uh, agenda you have or the outcome you want and emphasize information that does support the outcome that you want. And increasingly, it's coming to light that this is what's happening. <coughs> See, when um, the Internet started, and which, which came out of uh, uh, an organization called DARPA, by the way, which is the technological development arm of the Pentagon, um, it was sold as the free flow of information. You could, you could uh, post all kinds of opinions. Now, if that didn't start like that, and, and right from the start is you can't say that, you can't do that, then it wouldn't have got this, uh, this massive uh, control and, uh, and, um, um, and influence on the communications that go on between people. So you start with what people want. And then, especially more recently, you and faster and faster, you start... Um, doing, especially when you, you, you enter the realm of semi-monopoly, you start taking away the freedom of the free flow of information. So uh, people now are having YouTube channels just deleted. No explanation, just deleted on a, on a big scale when they're challenging the official narrative. Facebook um, uh, censor people. They have a thing called ghost banning where you actually get to post it but the AI makes sure it doesn't go anywhere. And, and when you have the power to do that, coming back to perception, you have the power to control the information that people receive and thus massively influence the perceptions that they have. And from their perceptions comes their behavior, comes what they will accept, what they won't accept, what they'll challenge, what they won't challenge. It's, it's an extraordinary uh, centralization of power. And, you know, people are saying, I love Trump, I hate Trump, and, and, and oh, it's the right, it's the left. And, and, and this, this, this vaudeville show, which it is in so many ways, is so focusing people's attention on that. It's everywhere, isn't it? Trump's everything. 
and people are not looking what's happening in that area of real estate in California where all this is going on. Uh, David, good to have you here. Good. Um, what about... That's where we go next. Trump, America. You were in America last week. You're filming, you're updating um, your documentary, Renegade, uh, which is all, which is you, which is what you are. Uh, what about President Trump? Is he a renegade? Um, he, I think he's a, a, a renegade in the eyes of many people who, who voted for him. Um, and, you know, when, when I see um, what is called the progressive left... Um, attacking uh, Trump and saying um, it's terrible what's happened. I say to them, look in the mirror, because the reason that someone like Trump could come to power, the reason uh, that um, these parties are coming to power in, um, in Europe is because so many people have been left voiceless for so long. For instance, if you um, have what is called political correctness, and we were talking earlier about censorship and what you can hear and what you can say political correctness is simply manipulating the population to silence itself um, and more and more we're seeing the Orwellian destruction of free opinion and the free flow of debate on the basis of you can't say that or you can't do that yeah exactly um, um, and, and, I'm, and I'm thinking of that actress who pulled out of the film, the transgender film. Who was it? Was it Charlie? Um, it was uh, Scarlett, Scarlett, Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of public pressure there for her to do that. Well, this, this is um, a, a major area of the suppression of freedom of speech and freedom of opinion. It's the mob. And when you talk, as I'm sure you do, to the general population, you find that their views of these issues are not the same as the mob. But the mob um, have got very organised, the, the, the Twitter stormers. And unfortunately, because uh, so many people, particularly celebrities, are frightened of upsetting people, frightened of losing or tainting their image as they perceive it, in other words, frightened of what other people think, again and again you see it. They're down on their knees, they're calling for the sackcloth and the ashes. I'm ever so sorry, please forgive me. And if we go on doing this, if we go on like uh, Scarlett Johansson did, I can understand it, but to, to pull out, if we keep doing that, then we're handing over power over our lives and our society to the mob, uh, the people that um, intimidate people into their version of everything. And this is, this is where we are now, increasingly. Um, the only right in the eyes of these people is I am right. And because I am right, anyone else that has a different opinion to me must, by definition, be wrong. And if they're wrong, then their right to freedom of speech is nothing like as important as mine, because it doesn't matter if they have freedom of speech, because they're wrong. This is the process that, that, uh, of, um, of thinking, or what passes for it, that is increasingly having these, uh, these vociferous, loud, um, uh, intimidating uh, people impose their will on everyone else. For instance, um, if people um, have a view that you can decide your gender by just deciding it, that is an opinion, and it's opinion that the people have the right to have. But if you say, actually, I'm a man and I don't have breasts, right, and, 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 and I have dangly bits, women don't, so therefore, there is something in this genetic relationship to sexuality, then that's an equally valid opinion that should be open to free debate. This is the way the mob works, however. You can say, well, yes, uh, you just decide your gender. Fair enough, it's your opinion. You, 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 you should have it. But the other opinion's not allowed. Yeah, and, and I, there's I, a simple thing, a just doctor, very quickly. A doctor um, last week quickly, who was Amy. sacked because it, scientifically he wouldn't agree to that. Yeah. So if you wake up and you say, well, I'm Edwina, not Eamon, he said, like, I can't recognise that. Yeah. But he got sacked for not taking that into account. Exactly. And that's how this brow beating into submission and intimidation works. And, and we are seeing the mob increasingly imposing its will. I mean, you know, I don't um, uh, have any... Uh, 
political sympathy with what's called um, the far right. But I do have sympathy with freedom of speech. And I certainly don't have sympathy with people that call themselves left, like Antifa, who go to um, meetings of of people they disagree with and, and knock the crap out of them. This is the world we're moving into. It's 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 so polarized and it's yeah. so I am right on one side and I am right on the other. Who's ruling? And the truth is always in the shades of grey. That's what we who's miss. Who's ruling this world that that we're in? You often talk about the global elite. Has Trump joined that global elite? Is oh, Theresa May part of that global elite? Is Angela Merkel? What what's? By what's the time you get to that level. You, you're talking here today, gone tomorrow, puppets, mate. And and, and if you're going to hide um, what I call the permanent government, what is increasingly now in, you know, mainstream society called the deep state, um, then we've got to understand that the focus of attention on the here today, gone tomorrow politicians is, is to, uh, diverting attention to where the real power is. It's not about, I mean, Trump is Trump now. And, and, and I, I love Trump. I, I hate Trump. Uh, he replaced Obama. Someone will replace Trump. And, and they come and they go. The permanent do- government doesn't go. At the top of the pyramid, you've got this, this network um, of people, very few people compared with the global population. It's laughable. Then you've got the secret society network through which it manipulates, but keeping secret that this cabal exists. Under that, you've got control of finance. And note, every one thing I'm mentioning doesn't come and go. It's always there. So you come through finance. And what does finance do? It dictates choice. If you say to people, what would you like to do with your life? And they say this. And I say, why aren't you doing it? They say, I ain't got the money, mate. Mm. So you control choice for the, for the population by controlling the, the money. Then you come down and you hit the military. The military is always there. When you travel around America, I'm sure you've seen it too, uh, Eamon, um, there's forts everywhere. I mean, the amount of land that's, 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 that's uh, occupied by the American military is staggering. And, of course, it's got a budget. I think it's up to 10 countries, the 10 next uh, countries with mil- the biggest military budgets before you, you equal the, the military budget of the United States. So it's fantastically funded. Along with the military, you've got the... Um, the military intelligence networks and the domestic intelligence network, the CIA and uh, British intelligence, uh, the National Security Agency, etc. These are always there. And then you come down, you hit the corporations, you hit the, 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 the justice and legal system. That's always there. And, and if you're going to control a society, you control the money, but you must also control the law. And then you come down after this, this hierarchy of permanence, and then you hit the here today, gone tomorrow politicians where the focus of attention is always on as if they're making the decisions. Okay. You know, they have a, a saying in America, people who are awake anyway, it doesn't matter who you vote for, the government still gets in. Yeah, the permanent government still gets in. And that's what's running the show. And that's why if you look across um, the, uh, the, 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 the presidencies and the prime ministers uh, 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 in different eras, um, the same basic agenda kicks on whoever's in power. And um, very quickly, if I've, I've got time before the, uh, the news. <laughs> um, so you haven't forgotten what look, it's done. No, it's not, not. Good memory. Look, look at democracy, right? Yeah. We're talking about the here today, gone tomorrow politicians. How does it work? In almost every country, there are two parties that have any chance of forming a government, sometimes three, m- m- mostly two. America, Britain, etc. Um, so you vote for Party A, and you don't like what they, uh, uh, and they get into power. You don't like what they're doing. The only way to get them out is to vote for Party B. You vote for Party B, they get in. You don't like what they're doing. Why? Because basically it's the same thing. Because the permanent government is dictating it, not them. So how do you get rid of Party B? Uh, you go back to party A and it's this this A, B, A, B that we call democracy. I was in Ukraine in uh, uh, 2010, I think it was. And the president <laughs> of Ukraine, Yanukovych, was the same man they threw out in the Orange Revolution in 2004 because the Orange Revolution put this other man in. He, he took power. They didn't like what he did. And when they wanted to get rid of him, Yanukovych, who was removed in the... Uh, in the uh, the so-called revolution, 
were still leading the other party. So he gets back in. Now, this is the madness, and we call it choice. John, David's listening. Hello, good evening to you all. Hello, John. Hello, hi. Good afternoon to you. Um, what I'd like to know, David, um, because I'm with you on this, especially with the internet and its control, how come we can't tell people? You, you see, way back when, when I was on CB radio, you know, I was always careful. I was always told not to say too many things. Um, how can we control this? Because I think, unfortunately, we're going to end up with a serious backlash. And I think at the, at the end of the day, people will go back to using CB radio. People will go back to using CB, uh, rebelling against this, John thinks. Well, that, that, that does happen. Uh, that, that kind of stuff does happen in America where there's a lot of stations like that. But, of course, they don't, they don't police the... Um, uh, the frequencies quite so much as they do in Britain, which is very much harder here. Uh, what what um, the Internet has done up to this point is to give um, a vehicle for alternative narratives to circulate. And uh, like I say, what is happening now is those vehicles are being systematically um, removed. And you have to ask, when people say, oh, is there a conspiracy, uh, all that stuff, well... Why, why, why would giant corporations, etc., like the Internet corporations, why would they want to censor people's opinions just because they're different to the mainstream narrative? There has to be a reason for it. And, and when you put um, all the other stuff together, uh, all the deletion of channels, all the gathering of, 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 of fine detail of, 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 of private uh, information, you can see Orwell's world unfolding and by the way um older suxley's brave new world which becomes more and more into four along with orwell to up to this point it's been the orwellian police state and surveillance and control but now we're seeing the the genetics the um the manipulation of um of of the human body even coming in which is what um the uh brave new world and older suxley was talking about and that came out in 1932 and you know uh in my books, I, um, I quote a guy, the, the one before the last one called Phantom Self. I quote this guy at, le at length. And it was in 1969. His name's Dr. Richard Day. And he was a big time Rockefeller family insider. The Rockefellers are in this uh, network. Um, and no one knows why he did it, but I'm glad he did. Um, he stood up at a meeting of, of pediatricians in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, because he was in the medical profession. And he asked them to turn off recording equipment and he asked them not to take notes because he was now going to tell them how the world was going to change because what he represented, he was only a gopher for it, mind, uh, was going to change it. And what he said that night in 1969 is absolutely stunning Which was? Uh, in the sense of the world that we now live in detail. And you know one of the things he said in 1969? What? We are going to make boys and girls the same. Interesting. And, and many I saw other a news report that, last night where that they, are happening now. Yeah, that, that they were doing that. They were taking uh, new gender references in the classroom. <laughs> it, it, it's if you if you if you, people read what he said in 1969, it is a a jaw dropper. Okay. When you look at the world today, that means very quickly mm -hmm. that there is an agenda. It's not happening randomly. Right. Well, let me ask you, David Ike, why are you here on this planet? Do you think? I mean, what is what is your your mission? Are you a prophet? Are you a conspira uh, conspiracist? Are you a preacher? W what's your job, do you think? Well, not, none of the above. And by the way, um, you know, this, this um, term, conspiracy theorist, conspiracy theory, uh, which is now used as a term of uh, debunking. Oh, he's a conspiracy theorist. Which, what's the conspiracy? What's the dictionary definition? It's two or more people conspiring to bring about an outcome. We're drowning in them on that basis. The question is, though, where did the widespread use of conspiracy theory and conspiracy theories come from? Where? It came from the CIA. Provable fact. Mm. During the 1960s, when people staggeringly, I mean, you know, why would they, were questioning the fact that a magic bullet had gone through several people in Kennedy's car and ended up in him, were questioning the fact that his head went back as seen on the Zabruder film taken by an onlooker, and they, they blame a guy who's supposed to be behind him. Do they have bullets that do U-turns, do they? So people were questioning that increasingly. And the CIA put out a document. You can still... I've published it in one of my books. Um, 
to the major media in America, mm -hmm. giving a list of things to use to discredit those that were questioning the Kennedy assassination. Of course, later Martin Luther King and, and the, the others of the 60s. And among them was use the term conspiracy theory and conspiracy theorist, because what does that do? It gives the idea that it's only theory. Mm. Now, do conspiracy theories exist? Of course, because you say, well, looking at the evidence, you know, I, I think this is probably what happened. That's a theory. But if people read my books, a, a couple of them, one of them's a thousand pages, one of them's not, uh, the, uh, not much smaller, you see enormous amounts of interconnecting evidence, not least from insiders and whistleblowers and, and what have you. Because once you do what I do, people, people are attracted to you to get the information out. You see, it's not a theory. Um, it's, it's backed up by substantial fact, but you can destroy all of that in one word or one phrase. He's a conspiracy okay. can I can I, can I ask you, you're a young lad from a council estate in Leicester. Yeah. How and when did you start thinking the way that you do? Because you see the world, you do see the world in a different way. Right. I connect with that partly. I, I get that because I don't like following rules. I don't like to be told what to do. I like to find an alternative way. But you've taken it to a different level. Yeah. How did that happen to you? Well, you don't have to um, go far outside the norm to be on a different level, frankly. But you are on a different yeah, level. But, but just very quickly, um, we're talking about this, this programming of perception. Look at a human life. When did it start with you? I'll come to that very quickly. I, uh, but, but this is an important point. Look at a human life. You come out of the womb and you're immediately um, influenced in your perceptions by your parents who've been through the process you're about to go through. Very soon, ludicrously soon after entering this world, you find yourself sitting at a desk with an authority figure now telling you what is, what isn't, what's right, what's wrong, uh, uh, what's credible, what's not credible, when you can go to the toilet, when you can eat, when you can talk. And this goes on through your formative years where the system's version of everything, what I call the postage stamp consensus because it's so narrow, is downloaded into people. And then they go off into the institutions, they become journalists, they become scientists, they become doctors, they become politicians, they become CEOs or whatever. And they take with them that core version of normal, they've been, uh, and limitation, possibility, that they have been downloading all their lives. And then the people in these institutions then confirm to each other that this norm is normal. So a, a journalist who's doing a story about, say, um, a, he a health situation won't go to an, a, an alternative practitioner who may have had great success in it. He'll go to a doctor who will give him postage stamp normal. So you don't have to go too far out Beyond of the, the norm. Beyond the postage stamp to be considered yeah. wacko. Yes, exactly. Mm. And the postage stamp um, defends itself and protects itself because... Um, of the crime of being different, which increasingly that, that's what we're seeing, not just mm. increasingly, it's gone on throughout known human history. Um, uh, religion uh, police the postage stamp, science polices the postage stamp, politics polices the postage stamp, now the Twitter stormers police the postage stamp. Um, but what happened to me um, was I was minding my own business. I mean, as, as, as Eamon said, I was saying, hello, good evening, um, here's the sport. Yeah. Um, and uh, then... Um, during 1970, no, 1981, 1982, no, what was it? Oh, yeah, no, it's 1988, 89. Um, I was um, a spokesman for the Green Party and I was a, a, um, a presenter with the BBC. And I got this feeling increasingly through um, uh, 1988 and then into 1989 when the Green Party had that massive uh, uh, European um, election success. I felt when I was in a room alone, I wasn't alone. I did not I didn't understand it, know anything about it. Uh, and it got to the point in the spring of 1990 when I was in the Kensington Hilton Hotel working for the BBC. And I just finished working and I, I came back to the room and I sat on the side of the bed. And um, I looked out into the room and the, the, the fact that there was some presence there I didn't understand was so tangible by now. I actually said, said into the room, if there's something there, would you please contact me? Because drive me up the wall. About um, uh, maybe a week later, two weeks later, I, um, I was with my son, uh, Gareth, a little boy then, and um, he went into a, a newsagent shop, to cut a long story short, and, I, and I, he was looking at the books, and I went in after him. It was at Ride on the Isle of Wight. The shop's still there. 
And um, I said, to, I said to him, um, "Come on, Gaz, we'll go up in the town and get some lunch." And as I turned, uh, my feet wouldn't move, and I felt. I know what it was now, it was an electromagnetic field, but a very strange atmosphere was around me. And I wouldn't say, it, was, it wasn't a voice, it was a very strong thought form, right? It said, go and look at the books on the far side. Now, I knew that shop very well, I went too often, and uh, the, the books on the far side were, were Mills and Boone and Barbara Cartland. What the heck am I going over there for? So anyway, I start walking in that direction in, in total bewilderment. And then in among these books of... Um, uh, you know, Barbara Carlin, etc., was this one which was called Mind to Mind, and this woman face on the front. And because it was different to the rest, I picked it up, looked at the blurb, and I saw the word psychic. And it, it was, the, um, it was the, uh, the, the autobiography of this psychic and how she works. And I thought immediately, I wondered if she'll know um, or pick up what the hell's happening to me in this last year. Um, so I didn't tell her anything. I said to her, was I've got arthritis, maybe your hands on healing my help, um, and nothing about what was going on. And when I went to see her, well, nothing happened the first time, but the second and third times, um, the atmosphere in the room dramatically changed. And I felt this like spider's web on my face suddenly while she's doing the hands-on healing stuff, which is just an exchange of energy. And of course, my, my backside's now slipping down the, the bench now because I'm thinking, I read about this in her book, that, that you can feel a spider's web like on your face, which I now know, again, is an electromagnetic field. And... About 10 to 15 seconds after I felt this, never said anything to her, she launches her head back and says, this is powerful. I'm, I'm going to have to close my eyes for this one. My, my bum's going more and more down the bench now because this is all new to me. And in the next, like, 10 minutes, and again a week later, that was the last time I went, um, she was telling me that she was being told to tell me that I was going to go out on a world stage and reveal great secrets. Uh, one man cannot change the world, but one man can communicate the message that can change the world. That I was going to face enormous opposition and ridicule and, 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 and stuff, but they, whoever they are, will always be there to protect me. Now, I came out of that um, not exactly neutral, but, well, we'll see, what, we'll, we'll see what happens. But what has happened since? All that she told me and more has, has unfolded in the most synchronistic way, like some force I've been walking through a maze and some force has been opening and shutting the doors to um, send me down the channels. And right to this day, that's how it's come mm. about. If I'd have done this just by trying to work it out, no chance. But mm. because of the synchronicity of the information coming to me, um, I've been able to put this stuff together. I've got to go to the break, but can you tell me in 15 seconds who they were who would always be there. no idea i've always uh, i've always just gone with my intuition does this feel right or doesn't it feel right and that is they a god that, is they no, it's religious not, or no it's not so. no it's not it's an energy force it's a it's a it's it's a form of consciousness it's uh, it's not some bloke with a beard sitting on a throne i mean the, you know that whole religious what thing. we're fed yeah what we're fed it's consciousness and 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 we are a point of attention within an infinite consciousness this is why racism and self-identity with labels of race and religion etc is so ridiculous it divides and rulers rules us they are just experiences for our point of attention okay. awareness to uh, experience love him or loathe him agree or disagree uh, with him david ike uh, does his research um, he knows what he's talking about he believes what he's talking about whether you believe it uh, is another thing and actually david you're getting a lot of uh, interesting complimentary uh, texts and tweets coming in uh, about you people certainly enjoy listening to you whether they agree or not is, is a different thing and what you do and I know you talk about this, is you join up the dots. Right, you do yeah. your research and yeah. you look at links that either the rest of us don't do or people don't want us to, to think That's about. That's the point. If you, if you look at things in and of themselves, world events, people, corporations, whatever, they look a certain way. See the connections between them. You stop seeing pixels, you start seeing pictures, and then the world opens up. Right. It's opening up in all sorts of ways. Artificial intelligence being the latest thing we're hearing or talking about. Do you, are you worried about that? Should we be threatened by that? I, I've written extensively about this um, because it's the end game. Up to this point, human perception, which otherwise human control by controlling human perception, has been done by controlling information that people receive. The AI end game 
which they're openly talking about in Silicon Valley, people like the Google executive Ray Kurzweil, openly. Um, this is why so, so many people recently have come out and said, hold on, where are we going? Uh, about connecting the human brain or the human uh, body uh, thinking processes, the human mind, to AI. And what Kurzweil says is that after this connection, which he's talking about 2030, that's what he's given. We, I'm talking in 2018, that once the connection's made, the AI will do more and more and more of human thinking until human thinking and that human consciousness, as we would conceive it, is, is in his words, negligible. Now, if you um, are controlling um, AI, you are turning people into a basically a computer terminal on the AI internet. And what's happening, bringing it to topical everyday today uh, situations, is, is people are being manipulated through something that I call the totalitarian tiptoe. You know you're going to Z, but if you go in too big a leap to Z, then people are going to say, what's happening? Because the change is so great. So you go as fast as you can from A to C to E to whatever. And every step is presented as in and of itself and not connected to the other steps. But if you break it down and you connect them, look what's happening. Stage one, you get people, particularly the young, because they're the adults in the world that, that uh, at, the, at the time this is supposed to come in. Um, you get them addicted to technology that they hold, holdables. You then, because uh, you want to get in the body, you then go on the body. You do your Google Glass, you do your uh, Apple Watch, you do your uh, Bluetooth. And now, uh, 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 next, and it's happening now, you go in the body with, with microchips. And not only microchips that you can see, but nano microchips, which a CIA scientist told me uh, in the late 90s was coming, which I put in my books at the time. And people said, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. Breathing in microchips, that's impossible. Not, it's not with nanotechnology, it's not. Uh, exactly what he told me is happening. And the idea, which is what we're being manipulated as a global society to do, is to connect our thinking and emotional processes to AI so the human mind becomes AI. It's, it's basically... An Westworld. It's an, it, West, Westworld. Well, this is the point. Uh, this is an important point. There is a, a method of perceptual programming that actually has a name. It's called... Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, basically, it's... Um, programming an, a, a, an understanding or a, a, an awareness of something before it actually happens. And what happens is you put out in movies and television programs yeah. the world you want to go into because yeah. if you don't, yeah. the division between what people are living and where you're going is so great that that division, that uh, chasm, will get people to say what's going on. So what you do, it's called preemptive programming. That's what it's called. And, and what you do is you put out all these programs. Look at the AI programs and the West Worlds and the synthetic uh, humans now. And you're basically getting people subconsciously familiar yeah. with where you want to take them so that you're, you're lessening the resistance. This is where we're going. And this is the Gosh. big end game that we must understand. And the end game of all end games <coughs> In 30 years from now, uh, I'm just looking at your Twitter page, uh, you say humans will attend their own funerals as robots. That's not me saying that. <laughs> that is um, uh, AI, um, uh, what they call themselves AI experts and mm -hmm. what are called futurists. Yeah. That's what they're saying, because this is the idea is to download. I mean, this sounds fantastic, but this is this is actually where it's going. And that's what that guy's talking about downloading human consciousness onto a digital form. So humans become digital rather than biological. I mean, th you, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't um, uh, think of something more far out except that that's what's happening. And, it's, and that, that in, in the way that he wrote is what Aldous Huxley was talking about in Brave New World. The time when there were no longer... Um, humans not even human procreation mm -hmm. not even male or female but a very different type of human and and all, this this explosion of transgender which is fusing the uh perception of sexuality 
that is taking us down the totalitarian tiptoe to um, to this world that I'm talking about. Well, David Icke, you are certainly a very different type of human. Uh, long may you continue to tease us, perplex us, educate us, inspire us, infuriate us, whatever you've done. Uh, you've done it very well for the past hour. Really that, appreciate it. That, that's very kind. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Thank you very much indeed.